Hey guys, it is me Simone. In this video, we're going to make this suitcase bag. So it's just a little suitcase bag that I made. You can open it up. <clears throat> it closes with Velcro and everything. It looks so cute. So that's what we're going to be making. I showed you guys on Instagram a couple a little sneak peek of this. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I guess it's the first time I've actually spoken since I woke up a couple hours ago. Um, I kind of sat down and started kind of preparing for this video so it wouldn't be so long. So let's get into everything you're going to need. So, this is inspired by an AliExpress die or die that's on AliExpress. I'll put a picture in right now. It's six dollars, but I also that's a very specific dye. I like it, but I don't really know what I'm gonna do with it. I just like it. I kind of don't want to buy things I just like with no idea what I'm gonna do with them. So I decided to just challenge myself to make something similar and um, see how I like it. So let's go over everything you're gonna need to make it like this. Now I'm gonna show you how to make it look like leather, like this. If you don't care about that, kind of skip towards the back and then we'll get into the actual making of it all right so to make it look like leather and everything you're going to need stress oxides I have some um, colors in walnut stain vintage photo and frayed burlap I have cocoa and raven dye ink from Ranger some of my favorite um, blending brushes these are makeup brushes from uh, eBay life-changing because like a life-changing price of eight dollars um some scissors a scoring stylus this is actually just a dotting tool for your nails i got from ebay too i'll leave all the links i can below you're gonna need your your uh die so i have this rounded uh rectangle die you're gonna need the biggest size and then the second um biggest size for the inside i have this label die that we're going to use a scoreboard this is some stained glass from plain jane that i'm going to be using i'll show you how it's optional but i'll show you what i'm doing then you're going to need some dark brown cardstock some light cardstock and then craft cardstock is our base that we're going to be using and then you're going to need a like whatever kind of layering die you have so this is just a plaid one some velcro glue and you're going to need <clears throat> this brilliance what's it called cosmic copper ink and then a paintbrush and yeah that's about it okay so this is making how I made it so let me show you what I did so I cut out my paper and and um let me scoot this up just a little bit so i just kind of keep myself in frame so i cut out my cardstock you use what cardstock you want to i have noticed you know depending on the color of the cardstock that you start off with it's going to affect it if you do this leather technique then you're going to get your blending tools and i'm going to blend in fray burlap vintage photo and walnut stain to give me kind of like a worn leather look so i start off with the lightest color and you're not gonna really see it too much it just gives me some variation when I blend and the other colors so I kind of do this very messily you know not really perfect because I'm kind of doing like worn leather and worn leather isn't perfect you know because it's old so there's like some imperfections on it so that's what I'm kind of like imitating okay let's just say that's good for now I'm going to clean my hands off. Alright, so we're done with the coloring. You won't, you can see a little bit of a difference. It's kind of like cloudy. I'm going to go with my Brilliance um, Dew Drop Cosmic, Co Cosmic Copper. And I'm going to add bits and pieces of it on here. The reason I'm doing this, I'm just using this tiny brush. It's not really going to blend out much, but I don't want to put just the ink pad on here. I want it to kind of have these bits and pieces 
on here. So the reason I'm doing this is for a variation, like maybe some light spots in, in the leather or whatever. And it adds a little bit of a shine to it. When you see it in person, you can kind of see some of the light spots you might have had in here. As of her. Not really blending, as I'm just doing, making sure I can actually kind of select where I put it and it's not just whatever. Then we just getting the ink pad and just doing that. It's a little harder because I don't want to get the, the shape. Okay, once I do that, to keep this from coming off or reacting with water, I'm going to seal it. If you have micro glaze, you can use micro glaze. I'm using this because I have this and I like what this does when you apply it. So this is stained glass. I got this on Tuesday morning a while ago. I don't think you can find some of these anymore. But this is satin, um, like a semi-matte, it says right here, semi-matte glaze medium. So any kind of glazing medium you can use for this. You can use um, triple thick if you want to, if you have that. Or you can use any gloss or matte medium that you have will work for this. I, and if you want to, you can like splatter this with water to make it react a little bit and see how that goes with you. So I'm going to use the pink one. They do have a small tint to them, so they do affect it. I did use a purple one for the main one I'm going to show you later on, but I'm going to go back. I like the pink one better. So I'm going to keep my brush kind of dry, and I'm just going to get the thing and start from the bottom and go up. Now, since this is water reactive, if you go over it like in the same area twice, you're going to pick up some of the ink and it's going to have the whole like, like look to it. Um, like a variation, like some spots might be a little lighter. You're still going to pick up ink regardless because it's still going to come off a little bit since my brush is wet and this is a wet medium, but you get some variety in your swipes. When you do this after you do that I'm just like <laughs> dipping my hands in some water you let those dry I'm gonna clean this off all right so I'm gonna clean that off so once I do this I'm gonna dry this once this dries I'm gonna go over with these two colors these are just permanent inks you do whatever and what I'm gonna do I start doing the black a little bit for the darker ones I didn't start off with black, I just did the brown. You can do whatever brown you want. And I'm going to get the brown and I'm going to go around the edges with the blending brush. And then I get the ink pad and I just do direct to paper and just do that and see what it does. And it gives you some nice texture, I feel. Once I do that, I'm going to go right back over it with another layer of satin glaze and then let that dry. Okay, I'm not going to do that now because I've already done it and I'll show you what it looks like. So, that's one layer, two layers. Can you guys see the difference? So, that's kind of what it looks like when I went over it with ink pad, splotching this. This is how it looks. You see how just kind of like plain it looks compared to this? See, so that dimension I added with the splotching this? So, that's what I'm going to do. So, then you do that. And you're going to do that to all your pieces. So that's a base. That's kind of the gist of what we're doing. So once you get that, you're going to need to know your other pieces to cut. So you're going to get a piece of craft cardstock. I use 8.5 by 11 because you're going to cut a little bit off once you wrap it. And then you're going to need a smaller piece for the bottom. So depending on how, what is that, the deep you want your box to be, well, depending on your measurements my box is about an inch deep so I cut a piece of paper that was 11 by one and a half and then I scored it at one and a half and then I cut these slits in it so I can round the edge then for the bottom base I did it by I think it's two inches and then I did a I scored on the side one half of an inch half of an inch and um, on the sides here I did another half of an inch oh sorry my thing in my box so two inches wide for the depth and then I just scored half an inch half an inch I still have one inch inside 
and then for the sides depends on how long your box is I mean how long your rectangle die is my rectangle die is a little bit over four inches I think it's like four and one sixteenth of an inch I think is what this die is so I just cut I made it that it was about five inches yeah five inches roughly and then I just scored half of an inch on both sides for a tap okay pretty simple I hope I was making sense for you guys for you guys if not put a comment below I'll try my best to explain it again okay so the box the now the die we use is a, a rounded rectangle we want the bottom of the suitcase to be flat so I'm going to go over and I'm going to just trim off a little bit of it this one. I think last time I did this I trimmed it at three inches because I think my box is a little bit over three inches but you just want to cut off majority of the curve so however that looks for you would depend on the rectangle die you're using so I think I cut off maybe an eighth of an inch or something off of here. So I didn't cut off much. And you can see I just, so it's not rounded and bring up some paper or something. So mine's just curved. So you see it's not rounded, it's a flat bottom. You don't, you want to cut off just most of the round. So you can do flatter than that. I just did that because it's just easier. After we do that, we're going to attach everything. Now, before we attach everything, it's an optional step. You see I have this paneling kind of like look around the box. I use the plaid die and I did this on on the box. I just glued it down. Cause on on the die on AliExpress, it they do have some like intricate paneling on the sides, which if you want to do that, you can cut out like piece of cardstock and glue it down if that's what you choose. I'm gonna quickly do that. No precise, I'm just gonna use this and this one little is it clogged this one little piece would actually do let's see if I can yeah I can okay. so I'm using some glitter is that glitter art glue right art glitter glue so see I did it completely wrong and it's gluing down couple pieces. This glue is seeping out, but this is a clear glue. It dries clear, so I don't really isn't gonna bother me. I think I'm gonna cut the part off, so I'm gonna leave it. And if I need to go back and add it, I'll add it later because I don't think I'm gonna need this entire sheet. Where is my top? Okay. And I did tell you to do a 11 by whatever your depth is for your box. And we're just going to cut the extra off because I don't feel like being like completely precise. So this depends on how big your box is. Alright, so we're going to start. And the reason I'm doing these little notches is because it is cold. I mean, it's cold. Because it's curved, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, these little notches are going to help the paper curve better than if you don't have um, smaller notches. So, just like these kind of little notches here. And then I cut them in half on certain areas. Mostly just the areas that curve, you're going to need to make sure you cut it in half. So I'm going to place this on here and kind of see and make sure I have enough on both sides. i do some guessing and that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to start off with adding a little bit of split. You can do hot glue if you want to. I was tempted to go back and get the hot glue. I just didn't feel like it. That's like the only thing I didn't feel like it. <clears throat> and it doesn't mean I have to like, you know, hold it down a little bit, but I just didn't feel like 
getting the other one. And it doesn't take too long to dry anyway. So then we're going to go into the curving of it on the curves. Making sure you curve it. And if you want to, you can curve your paper, like pre-curve it. So it just curves a little better. I didn't do that. I totally forgot. Just making sure my notches look good. And then I'm going to put some glue down. So if I'm off frame, I'll just make sure I'm eyeing it. So we're just putting glue on the notches. And lining them up with the curve. And making sure they're flush with the edge. Pretty simple. So it's, it's not bad. It's not taking you know, a lot of work. If you don't do the, the mixed media kind of like thing I did to it, then it'll be pretty simple. But you know me, I like the look of, I like you know, getting my hands a little messy. So, And then we're going to add your base. So this is the back that we're adding this to, not the front, we're doing this at the back. Because we're going to add some decorate pieces to the front and we don't want to add them first. So I'm going to cut off the little boxes that you make. So when you score it, you're going to have these little boxes on the side, just cut those off. And so it looks like this. I had paper. I had blank paper to use. So so you cut so it looks like this. The so little squares and makes when you score half an inch on this side, half an inch on that side. Have little boxes, cut those boxes off. Because you just want the tabs and the bottom tabs. Okay. So we're gonna add in these tabs. I'm actually going to cut off the extra because you don't need this. That's why I didn't go all the way down. This is 11 and a half paper. I mean, technically, you can do a smaller. I just do this to give me some wiggle room. And, you know, I don't like precise measurements anyway, so. <laughs> Takes a lot of time. Don't feel like doing it. So if you, you know, mess up a little bit, you can get some wiggle room and have it go better. That's how I see it. So You might want to perfect my measurements because uh, I have the biggest personal measure, measuring and everything. Okay, so once you have the base of our box, so that's our box, it's all done and everything, glued in, ready to go. I'm going to get my paper. I told you I cut some paper just one size smaller than the die we're using, the rounded die, and I'm actually just going to do ink the edges of this one just to add to that vintageness that I have over here not really doing like anything perfect or anything I just think it ties in if it has like some old like liner paper or lining fabric kind of like a lot of uh, older Suitcases have like this lining fabric in it, so I did that pretty quick. 
my sample and add the glue. And it's just going to kind of hide our tabs that we put on here. So, so you don't really see it. Put that in the middle. And then you can do this for the inside tab. I'm going to wait until after I attach it. So for the with the front of our suitcase, I may actually cut some darker cardstock into strips. And I did some copper foil paper, and I'm going to add these strips right here. Um, I'm going to put this little copper one in the middle. I think it looks so cool. Make sure that's good to go. Cut that off. Okay. You can decorate however you want to. For my original box, I did these little corners and I just used um, these are like photo corner dies I got from AliExpress and I just glued them on and then cut around the rounded spots so they don't, you know, the spots. I can't talk. So I just cut around them so they um, fit the shape of the die and that's why they're for this. You can do whatever. We're just going to do this one. And then we have one more thing. Where did it go? To attach it, we need our, our latch. I can't seem to find wherever it went to. I have no idea where my latch went. Okay, I used this die and I cut out a latch to close it to connect them. I just had to cut a new one, I guess. That's okay. So let me just use my small little portable die cutting machine. Oh, I found it. Good. It was hidden. So I use this die. This is a label die. And I cut it out of some dark cardstock. And I'm going to use that. I'm going to cut off part of the end. And I'm going to score it. Depending on how much surface area you want. I'm going to score mine. Gosh, maybe a quarter of an inch. Let's see. We'll see. Let's we'll see how much I like about that. Just add a little tab. You just need a little tab to go on the inside. So we'll see how much. I think I want a little more than that. So I think I'm gonna do maybe I'll do half an inch. Okay. And I'm gonna add some of my art glitter glue here on the tab and I'm going to put it kind of centered somewhat you know as close as you can in the middle like that so we have a little thing so I'm going to go and finally attach the front and you can do what I did another one and actually add a label right here I just didn't feel like it and I'm going to add that to the front sure it's all attached and then we're going to add our velcro this velcro is from dollar tree i cut in half it's just a little circle of velcro so i'm going to attach and it has adhesive on it so i'm not going to add more adhesive and but you can if you want to i'm going to attach them together so just put the two velcro pieces together and then put it down just make sure it's lined up and everything 
And then the last thing I'm going to do is I just cut a little piece of paper. Which one I want to do? This one? A little strip of paper. And you can do a little handle. Doesn't matter the size. I'm just using some scrap pieces of paper <laughs> there on my desk. Uh, what's the wrong one? Three, what is this? Almost three inches? Let's just do. Right there. There's a little notch so we can add a label and then curl it. And glue it down. So we have a little uh, handle for this thing. Okay, so that's my suitcase. <laughs> Pretty cool. I took forever to make this video. I tried to invest the cut corners. I guess it would take so much longer if I didn't do some of the things I already did off camera. And of course, losing stuff does not help the progress go like any faster. So you can add a label and do it like this, or you can do it like this. It doesn't really matter. Um, you still have the nice paneling kind of look on the, on the side. And you have two handles. So I think it turned out amazing, super simple, I think, not didn't take too long. And of course, you can skip the entire making it into leather. All you would do is cut out the rectangle, cut out the rectangles, trim them off, make the base, however deep you want it to be, plus a half of an inch on both sides. So if you're for the outer edge, you add a half of an inch to one side because you're only going to attach it to one side of the um, box. And for the bottom, you add a half an inch to both sides, and the, uh, the top and the bottom and the sides, so you can attach it to both of the little rectangles and to the framing of your suitcase. Makes sense. Hope made sense. Sorry if it didn't. I'm bad at sometimes explaining things. So pretty simple. If you have any questions, like I wasn't explaining anything, and that made sense. Please tell me below. Um, that's why you shouldn't make a video, you know, shortly after you wake up. <laughs> but I really wanted to get this video out to you guys, so I hope you enjoyed it. You can make this any kind of theme. There's just like some old ones, but you can make them look like Valentine's suitcases for the Valentine's holiday. Um, if somebody's moving, you can get them this, you know, put some goodies in it. And then, oh, you know, you open it up and you have this nice looking inside and I didn't add the liner to this one yet <clears throat> as I told you to wait so you can cover the tab for the top and some of the tab for the bottom that attaches it super simple super easy I think or, yeah once you get past like the mixed media part it's not that much of uh, anything so I just starting off with my t my little template of my prototype and then kind of fixing what I want to fix this one's all kinds of wrong but never um, I hope you enjoyed the video guys and you got some inspiration much love and I will talk to you later Please, if you do make the box, you know, tag me if you post it on my Instagram or something. Um, my Instagram is always linked below. Or if you're making a video or something, you know, comment below here that you made a video. I would love to see how you guys take this and make it into your own. Much love, and I will talk to you later. Bye. Get crafty.